Oh! Oh! Are you ready for another wild ride into the Thomas the Tank dark side realm? This mega double episode is full of crazy and curious knockoff Thomas and Friends toys. The main purpose of these toys, which seem to be redesigned every year, is to lure in very young children to nag their parents to purchase these dangerous toys. And while parents keep buying these illegal toys, money feeds into the criminal circles who unsell these toys or produce these toys in illegal factories. I'll also have something to say about spam uploaders on YouTube and the risk and reward of not copying content which is produced by other YouTube producers. Okay, let's do it. Well, our first train set in this Dark Side episode is called a funny train set. Well, I guarantee you what's inside this box won't be funny, but what we'll read on the outside of the box will be funny. This remarkably frightful looking Tonner set cost me $10. A bit of a circus theme going on up there. That's what it makes when you pull the track out. And it looks like some very simple instructions to put the battery in. The box tells me it's suitable for children 36 months plus, And these sorts of reads should ring alarm bells. Electric train track, new series, come play with me and I will bring you to happy time. One curiosity is the artwork of the circus area there has been flipped around. You can tell that by trying to read the signs. I actually purchased two of these sets. I'm only going to open one of them because I was just wondering how poorly the stickers were put on and seeing if it was going right across the board. And from every set I saw in the stores that were selling these, all the stickers were put on really, really poorly. And that is, I mean, crooked. Well, what's coming out of this box looks like a very, very crooked Thomas. Apart from a very strange shape, it looks like he's missing an eye. Anyone that goes to the markets in Sydney, Australia would recognise these sets. They seem to morph in design all the time. I mean, look at this brake van or caboose here. Look how poorly the sticker has been put on. It's not even built correctly, so that piece isn't in its spot. Uh, this is very low in gear because I've got it in my hand. I can feel it uh, Complete and utter Choking hazard nightmare if children never got their hands on this be small parts breaking off. I am sure and As for the Thomas model It's just so unusual. That's um, probably the only thing I could say Well, let me battery this one up and set the track up and see what it does Well on this Thomas the on and off switch is up the front here, which is a little bit unusual there's always sort of different designs inside, sort of makes them quite curious. I now cover my batteries right up because I'm so tired of the battery rage on my channel. Oh, feels like it's on. Okay, it's off. Let me get the cover back on. I just wanted to turn on. You naughty Thomas, turn off, turn off. Ah! Right up the start, we've got a welcome to the dark side. Even in the off position, this Thomas is on. <laughs> but you get that when you're dealing with these sorts of toys. Doesn't seem to be uh, much power in that motor, I can tell you. But then again, why aren't I surprised? Fancy that made in China. Where else would it be made? Well, let's give them a spin. This track system is very flexible. Uh, I've got a lot of this because I looked at so many of these little knockoff Thomas sets. Uh, it's pretty easy to put together, but um, sometimes you'll get a different style of track set that, that's a little bit different in dimension. There's sort of no standard to this. Because it's all knockoff, isn't it? And because I can't turn that Thomas off, it's going to make it a very interesting little train to kick off. It's going to be probably fraught with danger here. Just carefully come in here and uh, hook it on first, of they say, and get ready to go. And Thomas, knockoff, underwhelming, is away. Now it looks like we've got some trouble. We've got the back, oh, it looks very messy. It's getting messier and messier as it goes around. I'm sort of not surprised at all. It's sort of funny, actually children love seeing things like this when trains go awry. And because I can't turn this train off, I'm going to have to come in while it's running and reset it back onto the track. Okay. Let's see how long it lasts this time. I know that middle carriage is looking a little bit upset, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it's just stunning automatic. That's going to ram the back now. Boom. That's the weird thing about some of these little sets. They can um, really do strange stuff and play up on you. 
Come on, Thomas, get your act together there. You now it's looking very messy, isn't it? Another knockoff Thomas and Friends train wreck. Sort of, uh, I don't know whether to turn the camera off, you don't know what's going to happen. Oh, it's the way. Free at last. Free as a knockoff Thomas can be. Well, maybe we know why it's called the funny train set. Because it's been playing up sort of funny right out of the box. It might work better if I strip these down and get rid of some of the weight on it. Because I think it's actually a little bit too heavy <laughs> for what it is. Let's just run it without these top bits on and just the bottom bits. And just remember I've got no off switch on this so that's why I'm having to connect it up like this. Being very careful, it's like playing over the mountains there. And away we go. Oh yeah, it's a much faster runner now. Oh, that's a vast improvement on performance. And that, my lovely viewers, was the knockoff Thomas and Friends funny train set. Well, the only way to turn that one off was to remove the battery. And what is interesting is on the set I pulled out, you've got the straights are green, the curves are orange, but in this set up here, the straights are orange, the curves are green. And it's also interesting to note that the sticker there is put on as badly as the set that I pulled out of the box. And the other curious aspect to these sets is what I call the Thomas Tax Factor. I can bring in another set here. I've actually looked at one very similar to this before. I know because I've got that same design engine in the Thomas's I've lined up at the back here. This was $10 for me as well. So there's $10 there, $10 there. But if I bring into the equation one which is not Thomas themed, it's just a fire and rescue train set, which sort of seems awesome, but believe me it's not. It was only $3.50. And I can go actually one better than that. Here's a supersonic speed railmaster little train set. It's the same sort of track, it's all the same sort of size. And that there was only $3. So for some reason, as soon as the Thomas and Friends Empire strikes itself onto one of these styles of train sets, the price basically trebles. And to be quite honest, I actually find that quite alarming. And I'm pretty sure I've had one of these sets in before. I'm not exactly sure if the box artwork is, is the same or different. I do have the box under my house somewhere, but I haven't been able to pull it out. But what is interesting if I pull that Thomas out there and compare it to the one I've had before. And what is very interesting, and this might be a classic example of it, is even though you think you're getting the same train set, you know, over and over, and these might have been bought, you know, a year apart, there's actually a lot of differences going on between these two models. There's actually a bit, bit of difference in the plastic on the top. I've got a funny feeling the underneath and the motor and everything is the same. Although maybe, oh no. Yeah, they're the same length. Looks like the on and off switch is in the same area. But uh, the more you look at that, the more variation and difference you see between those two models. And in a funny way, that's what makes collecting this dark side stuff so interesting. Once I strip the top of these knockoff Thomases away, you can see the core of these toy trains is identical. Well, before I show you the next Thomas, I'd like to show you what I have lined up up the back there. Well, I have a sneaky suspicion this is the 10th video of the Thomas Darkside that I'm doing on YouTube. Here are all the Thomases that we've had a look at over the series. I do keep these. I've got, there's a couple of double ups and treble ups that I've got in box that I haven't put out. But I've got a feeling I've got them all here. Probably one of the uh, favourite ones was that Transformer style Thomas there. That was very unusual. But as I keep tracking along, you'll see all the stars that we sort of saw, it's quite amazing uh, the variation that was going on and there were some clones in there which were in a sense quite remarkable and there's one here which uh, I think gets seen in another video, I'm not sure if that video is up yet um, but this one here is the one that causes a fair bit of confusion and delay. This Thomas here is a very curious one, it looks mighty impressive, there's all sorts of details on this that they're actually very hard to find on the real McCoy toys. I think the part that would fool most people is they would see this on a toy and they would be thinking, wow, it's a real McCoy Thomas Cuddly Pillow. 
But I can tell you when I purchased this, it just came in a plastic bag. But there's one thing that this toy is missing that really rings alarm bells with me. And that's like the little tag that would have extra licensing info. Or maybe some info related to safety or what the toy is stuffed with. Now if I bring in a real McCoy, Thomas toy, that I know is a real McCoy one. Choo choo! And a knockoff one's laying on its side. This toy, sure, you know, it doesn't look as impressive as the, as the one we just looked at. It's got those sorts of tags on there there. It's a bath time plush. But the part that I like to see is this one here. And this is the tag that the other Thomas is totally missing. But not seeing that tag is a telltale sign. But strangely, if you do see that tag, doesn't guarantee that the toy is not a knockoff. Plush toys is the most dangerous realm when it comes to knockoff toys. Okay, this next little Thomas is quite interesting for the fact that it's quite small. I think this is a mini-me version of a knockoff Thomas that I've already got. As always, the box artwork reveals some very curious reading, and that's always going to give you a laugh. Well, let me come in and unbox these two beauties. Have I mentioned these were five dollars each? They're bump and go Thomases. Come on, Thomas, out you come. It's time to play. Oh, how cute. There's number one. <laughs> I don't know, the eyes are crazy on these ones. Here comes number two. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well then, this is right up there with Strange. Uh, it looks like they're trying to turn Thomas's face into a clown face. Let me come in and do one of my famous or infamous in-hand appraisals here of one of these Thomases. Well, we've got a revolving wheel in the back here. The connecting rod sort of floats on that middle wheel, doesn't really connect to the front wheel. There's actually another larger Thomas which is almost identical to this that we'll look at next. That's the artwork on the back, the switches on the back there. What else can I see? Apart from the seam work starting to open up here, it's had a sticker Friday. On both of them, the cab stickers are put on pretty poorly. It's got a lot on the front, it's got the strangest faces we've already pointed out. The speaker is there and if I turn it on, and my goodness, get ready for a shock horror. That's what it does. And I think the most curious aspect to this Thomas is the fact that it is very, very similar, and I have to move the camera to that big one there. And between those two Thomases, sure there are some differences, but I think the similarities would outnumber the differences. It really is a case of honey, I shrunk the Thomas. Okay, let's have some bump and go action. I've got the circuit set up. Let's turn these babies on very loud, aren't they? And they're away. But boy, they're not moving that fast. Oh, well, they're trying to have an accident. Oh, it's like watching them in slow motion. Oh, bump and go, bump and go. Oh, coming in for another collision there. Even though they're moving fairly slowly, they seem to be attracted to each other. I don't know why. Can't seek and destroy Thomas's. Looks like one's stuck here. Oh, are we stuck? Looks like we're stuck on this bit here. We better get you out of there, Thomas. Come on. You can do better than that. This one's a bit of a killer, this one. It's not the one that gets stuck in the corner. It's coming for another bump. Well, I want to spice this up a bit. These guys are moving a bit slow for me. I've got one of those red birds that lays eggs. If I turn this on, I'm pretty sure this is a sprite little character. It's going to cause confusion and delay. Oh, it's laid eggs already. Oh, it's away! Watch out, Thomas, this red bird is out to get you. Instead of the piggies, red bird's after the Thomases. Oh, and red bird's doing a spinner there. Oh, he's going to lay something. He's got nothing to lay. Oh, Thomas has got one of the eggs. Whoa! Looks like the Thomases are rounding up the eggs over there. They're being the pigs in this challenge. Oh, red bird's gone for a knock. But he's in a bit of a spin all to himself. Oh, he's off now. He's in hunting down for those, one of those piggy Thomases. Whoa, just missed. Trying to collect his eggs again. Redbird's addicted to laying no eggs. He's on his way again. He's on the hunt. Seek and destroy the Thomases. Who's he going to find? Oh, Redbird's doing a wild ride here. Oh, laying his no eggs again. Watch out, the Thomases are getting the eggs, Redbird. You better look after your eggs. This Redbird's totally crazy. 
Whoa, watch out. Well, looks like Thomas has rounded up one of the eggs here. Come on, Red Bird, you've got to save your egg. Oh, he's running away. Oh, no, they're having another kiss. Whoa, look at that there. Thomas giving Red Bird a bit of a nudge. Come on, Red Bird, get your act together. Off Red Bird goes. Oh, he's addicted to laying no eggs. Strange, isn't it? Oh, a bit of a bash there. I do love the way that Thomas is uh, collecting the eggs. Man, no, certainly on the piggy side. Well, it's a sort of crazy entertainment you could probably watch all day, but we're not going to do that on this channel, are we? No, we're going to come in and silence this uh, nightmare of a noise. Oh boy, I cannot wait to turn these off. Shush, Red Bird. Shush. Shush. Oh, man, that was doing my head in. Well, thank you for your cameo there, Red Bird. My son loves the uh, the Transformers Red Bird thing that's going on on the apps at the moment. I haven't seen the toys yet. I'm assuming the toys are around the corner. But that is that knockoff Red Bird there. Lay eggs, Angry Birds. Haven't seen these in the shops for a while. That's a $15 one. Uh, they varied in price a lot, that toy. Uh, and they were fairly popular. Um, but it's a knockoff. But somehow Angry Birds seem to revel in the knockoff realm. Okay, we'll do a couple of the knockoff merchandise. Here is a set of coloured crayons. Now, what's interesting about these is they came from Vietnam. So you can sort of find, I mean, that's getting pretty close to the source where this stuff comes from. China's not far from Vietnam. And uh, what is interesting here is the price. 60,000 Vietnamese dong, which works out to about $3 Australian. So this is actually a fairly expensive set of coloured crayons. I'll quickly come in and we'll take a very quick look at one of these. Well, it says crayons that you twist up. I'm sure you're familiar with those. Who is that first character? Is that an off-color Thomas? I think it is. Or maybe I'm totally wrong there. Moving right down here, Bill and Ben are flower pot men, isn't it? Those naughty twins have sort of come back into fame. And down the bottom here is a uh, correct colored Thomas. Now looking at that one there, uh, versus what at the top? Oh, the audience will know. Well, I'll move on from this $3 item. If you're unlucky, you'd be paying maybe $5 in Australia for that. To this $3 item here. This wondrous little Thomas is a fridge magnet with a blue face. That's sort of what um, pulled me in. I've forgotten where I purchased this. It would have been somewhere in these strange shops that carry this sort of stuff. Come on out. You're being troublesome, aren't you? Here he comes. He feels all soft. In a strange way, he's fairly well detailed. Uh, but the blue face is very unusual. There is the magnet on the back, and notably there is no licensing information at all on this blue-faced Thomas the Tank. Okay, that was our $3 fridge magnet knockoff to something which is very different. Uh, this is a mystery to me, this one. I've got a sneaky suspicion this is a knockoff, but I may be wrong. Um, please don't hang me for some of the things I say here, but I'll need your help to tell me what you think about this one here. Uh, let me point out some things on this and then you can tell me what's going on here. The strangest part to this one is the back card read, but let me show you this down here. I paid $10 for this. The read here is quite curious. 2011 Ghislaine Thomas Limited, made in China. But the part that really spooks me is the read here. Just how look how poor the translation is. The English is really all over the place and that's always a sign of a knockoff. Have a read right in the middle of the screen there. Don't near overheat or fair in order not to destroy. Its exterior modelling for this is plastic product. Now when I start reading things like that, there are alarm bells ringing big time. And it goes down here to explain how it works and where the pen is and all the rest of it. Uh, but the other part that sort of worries me is basically the artwork on this card. It just doesn't look right. There's something a little bit spooky about the way the artwork's set up. And that's another sign sometimes that we're dealing with a knockoff. Well, why don't we take a look at what comes out of the packaging? There it is there. It's a pretty cool looking Thomas, if you ask me. Basically because it's got his running board there. I've already put batteries in this. There's batteries inside this part here, which turns a light on. And if I press this button here, hopefully it'll spin up. It has a bit of trouble sometimes. There it goes. Okay, it's a bit out of balance as well. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit dodgy, brothers, and that also sort of shouts to me knock off. But there's something on the back here which is going to surprise you. Let me turn it off. There is quite an interesting read through here, and it's extremely small font. 
Now looking down through a magnifying glass, it looks like 2011 Ghislaine Thomas Limited made in China, but can we trust that? And sadly, just because we see that information doesn't necessarily mean this little Thomas is a true licensed product. And here's a bit of a look at the artwork on the pen section where the batteries are. It looks like that. We can go down. There's a very modern day looking Thomas, I suppose. There's Percy. And there's James has been cut off a bit. And down the bottom here is the pen aspect of this. And the batteries are actually hidden away in here. Um, but this is a curious one. I can't tell. It just has a bit of knockoff feel to it. But there's also things in here which sort of say licensed as well. So who's the true Thomas fanboy who can unravel this mystery? Sorry for the pun. Couldn't help myself. I'm not sure where this will help or hinder you, but where I bought the Thomas one. They also had a Disney one as well. It's one of the ducks. To me, the artwork just screams knockoff. It was a little bit more expensive than Thomas. I don't know why. It had the Disney tax. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. You know, copyright Disney, blah, blah. But there's just something about this that spooks me. It just doesn't look right. What was weird when I purchased this one here, it came with some knockoff Duracells already preloaded. And guess what? I've even found a whole series of Redbird fans. Same style of fan. This again shouts knockoff. The artwork just looks that knockoff Angry Birds style. It's really got you thinking, hasn't it? Remember, that was the one we started to look at, and it caused all sorts of confusion and delay with what I showed you on it. So what's your thoughts, particularly on that Thomas there? Well, the next one comes presented in this um, pink checkered box. Should always be a warning sign. A lot of knockoff stuff comes in boxes like this. It says Thomas here. Would you have any clue what lies inside this box? The smaller writing there says fancy present. Well, let's see if that's true or not. Oh, bit of Thomas Blue. Ooh, what's going to come out of here? Oh, this looks exciting. Oh, there's a bit more to come out, I think. Another major component of this. Ah. Got to take the bubble wrap off. Let's take a look at what we've got. The store that was selling these had just about every franchise known to man represented. And it's basically a giant watch that you put up on the wall. And this is a Thomas and Friends themed one. Okay, I've thrown a battery in the back there. We're not talking brands in this video. Too much rage from the audience on that one. This is one of those things where you're either going to say, Oh, this looks really good. Or this looks super tacky. Um, when they're all set up. You know, in unison with all the different brands in the shop, it actually looked fantastic. But let me just put this together and we'll take a look at it down on the bench. Well, there it is down on the bench. I've got a little Thomas taking play right next to it to give you some sort of scale. It's actually a famous one, that one. Maybe some of you know that one. It was $8. I don't know if I told you how much I paid for this. One of those things that the more you bought, the cheaper they became. I think they went down to $5 each if you bought three. And the way you would normally display this is you would go and hang it up on the wall. I haven't got a wall here to hang it up on, but I will put it rested up here. And if I go back, you'll see it in its vertical stance. That's how it would look up on your wall without all the Thomas knockoff awesome behind. Well, the next Thomas knockoff train set we're going to take a look at looks like it's a variation on the Tommy Blue Track system. It's simply called Thomas Train. It cost me $12. There are lots of these in the markets where I go to. It's got the classic Hallmark reads that you find on these. Happy time, let's play. It's so cool. But this Thomas looks like it's a bit different to the other Thomas knockoff Tommy ones that I've got. Before I crack it open, you can see just how small this Thomas box is here in comparison to one of the larger Tommy knockoff sets there. That's one I picked up not that long back. It's got a moustache on the Thomas. Don't ask me why. And this playset here, which is actually not a very big circuit, but it's Basically a box which is packed out with foam. I think we've taken a look at that one, you know, way back. But the, it's a very basic circuit there. Now, this is a very, very compact box. And let's see what comes out of it. I actually purchased two of these sets. And it's going to be quite interesting to see if eventually we will see a knockoff of the classic Trackmaster track happen. We see plenty of knockoffs of the classic Tommy Blue track that is a favourite with many people. Oh, this looks very interesting. It's very well packed. There's no box bloat in here, I can tell you. Okay, we've got a couple of sets of points here. 
which if you're into knockoff track is always nice to have. At $12, I was sort of thinking this is actually running at just under half the price of a little starter set, a real McCoy Thomas starter set. But I'd be very curious to see what quality this is. I'll look at those after we've pulled the rest of the track out. There are the curves, rubber band holding them together, and there are a couple of straights. And it's interesting with train sets, and I'll say it on this video here, is, and I think we all know, that train sets tend to be very, uh, what would you call it, lacking in straights. Plenty of curves, but you never end up with enough straights. Well, first up, a bit of an appraisal of the track. Um, this is the higher quality of the knockoff Tommy Blue. It's pretty well finished off. There's no Sharpies and no bits of plastic uh, left over from the making of this track. It goes together very nicely. It's interesting, I've had some poor quality knockoff stuff of the Tommy Blue, but this one is actually very good. Shouldn't say it like that, should I? It'd be right up there on par with the real Tommy track, I feel. And I'll unwrap um, this wagon. I can tell you one thing from uh, just from the outside of this before I unwrap it. This seems fairly large. You know, Mattel have done <laughs> some trees in there. Wonder where the trees were. Uh, Mattel have done a bit of downsizing with the Trackmaster too, but it looks like Knockoff Realm has gone for some upsizing. Let's get a head around the scale of this Knockoff wagon here with its load of trees there. Here comes a real Tommy. Troublesome truck. I'll line it up at the back there. That's important in this comparison. Here comes one of the little red trucks that came with Trackmaster Classic Series or Trackmaster 1 in the starter sets. Do you remember those starter sets? They were great. They were quite often very inexpensive if you knew where to get them. And here is from Trackmaster 2 the wagon that came with Devious Diesel, the new Devious Diesel. Okay, so we can see there how, well, the real Thomas Empire is shrinking, yet the knockoff realm seems to be expanding his size. What would make a very interesting video would be to analyse this wagon here versus this wagon here. It's interesting, at first glance, it seems like not much has gone on, but the more you critically look at this, boy oh boy, does it start telling a story of the shape of things to come. Okay, we've got a load of trees here, so maybe we can set up Tracy Island like on Thunderbirds, because these are nice and bendy. Boing! But the wagon here, apart from being oversized, it's got some fairly unusual axles. What's weird here is it's a little bit like a giant you know, uh, pinwheel axle, like a Hot Wheels axle. It's got a floating wheel there. On the real Thomas stuff, you wouldn't see a floating wheel like that. When they had steel axles, <coughs> without getting angry. Uh, the coupling system here, uh, it feels fairly, I don't want to rip it apart yet because we want to see the little Thomas running around. You know, it's adequate, I suppose. It's not the lowest of the low end, but it's not um, super high quality either. But one thing I really don't like about these toys, and this is where they become also dangerous, is they are fairly easy to actually pull apart. Although, I'm going to struggle here, aren't I? Oh no, there we go, I've got it. Now, I know little fingers are very clever, but it doesn't take them long before they start pulling apart. And next thing, it's being pulled down to its minor components. Well, okay, let's inspect the Thomas in this set. It's been bubble wrapped as well. You see me fighting with this one, can't you? Come on, Thomas, don't make an embarrassment of me right now. Everyone's looking. And I can tell you straight away, this is actually like an upscale version of a Trackmaster Thomas. More so even the Trackmaster 2. Boy, oh boy, this, uh, this looks very different indeed. Uh, looks like Thomas has had a, a reshape of the funnel area there. Someone's going to say it. this looks like another character. There's the face. Sort of happy face, isn't it? Looks like it's got lights in here. This is very unusual. I like this for the fact that it's very unusual. It's got some traction tyres going on there. Um, it's your classic sort of knockoff build. There's no details under there. Uh, talking about where it comes from or anything. I think it opens up like that. <laughs> I know we're Trackmaster. <laughs> so you got their idea from now. It's a very, very similar design, I'm sure, to Trackmaster 2, although this uses larger batteries. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Let me throw in some covered up no-name batteries. <laughs> and we'll turn it on the switches. Oh my goodness, <laughs> not that sound chip. Please no! Why? Why do you have to put a sound chip in it? It's going to kill me! Oh, I better stop being so emotional. 
and get back to normal here. <laughs> it's the gold bunker too. Look at this here. It's running on aluminium powder, this one. It might go very fast on that. Oh, why? It's actually very, very strong in the motor department. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, it's got the flashing lights. Oh no, let me set the track up and we'll give it a spin. Okay, I have the layout on the table there. Let's turn this Thomas on. Switches on the front there. Away he goes. He's not a very fast mover, but I've got a funny feeling he's got a fair bit of power in those wheels. Let me just flick the switch here and we'll see him go in a circle. Likes a bit of circle work, the old Thomas. Pull it from fast. Ooh, just in the nick of time there. We can go down the straight again. Remembering I paid $12 for this knockoff Thomas. Little train set that it is. And maybe what I'll do to show you that this Thomas has got a fair bit of grunt, if I put a Trackmaster 2 Thomas in the back here, you'll notice that his speed doesn't really change. It's like he's totally unaffected, he's carrying all that extra weight. And in fact, I think I could load up on the top here a Trackmaster 2 Devious Diesel very carefully. And you can still see that it really hasn't slowed him down. Quite remarkable. Well, you have to admit, you don't see that every day. It looks like Diesel's trying to rattle his way free there. He's moving a bit. I think there's going to be a horrible accident in a second. He's hanging in there for grim death, old Diesel. He's probably getting burnt by Thomas and Steam. Come on, Diesel. Get a grip on yourself and break yourself free. He's desperately trying to jump off. Who knows when? He's going to make the epic escape. Come on, Dizzy, you're looking very unstable there. Get a new life. Jump off, Thomas. He's only a knockoff. He'll do you no good. Oh, I've got a feeling Diesel is moving closer and closer to the edge there. You're too good to be riding on the back of a knockoff. Come on, jump, jump. Oh, he's jumped. He's free. Oh no, he's too close to the track. Is he going to get hit, is he? Whoa! Well, anyway, I just hope I can show you that that Thomas there, as knockoff as he is, can pull a fair bit of weight. But maybe there's some more tests we can do with him. In a bit of a homage to Thomas vs. Thomas, let's set up this cloner here, this fake one, next to a classic Trackmaster 1, as we'll call it, real Thomas. Let's set them up on a collision course on the blue track and see which one is more powerful. Okay, the real Thomas is a bit more sprightly. Here comes a knockoff one. They're going to collide somewhere. Right there. Oh, and it's a Thomas battle on. Who's going to be stronger here? They've both got traction. Oh! My goodness, I would say that the real Thomas here has won. It scootled away. That was pretty even, Stevens, I can tell you. In fact, that was so close. Uh, I think I need to see that again. I was quite surprised by that. Okay, set this one off first, and set this one off. Hopefully got the timing right here. They're going to collide any moment. Oh! This is very close again. It's really almost too close to call. Every now and then, the real Thomas gets a bit of traction there. But that knockoff is fighting back. Oh! Oh! Well, knockoff Thomas here is on the side on the table. The real Thomas has fallen down there to the ground. Well, what do you reckon? Who won that one? I'd almost say uh, this is even Stevens between those two Thomases. Or how about this one matchup? There's that nasty, big, dirty knockoff Thomas the Tank versus the brand new spanking Trackmaster 2 Thomas the Tank. Now I know this is a very sprightly Thomas. I'll probably set it back here. So I'll do the full round. Hopefully going to get a collision here. And we'll put the quite sluggish 
knock off here. Okay, here we go. Let's hope I got the timing right. They are coming around. Oh! Oh! Well, you know what I'm going to say? I'd say this one here is one. I'll have to see it again. Down on the ground there is the Trackmaster 2, Thomas. I really need to see a rematch of that one. I really do. Okay, we're set for another look at this. Trackmaster 2, Thomas versus this dirty big clone. Coming in for a collision course. And whoa, it's happening again. Well, no. Oh, I'd say actually Trackmaster 2, Thomas has won. And it's scootling around the edge of the track. This is unbelievable. A goal. And he's caught up at the back there. Oh, this is so much fun. Oh, I think I need to see that one again. I really do. Mind you, it might be fairer for this Thomas here if he was on his own Trackmaster 2 track. Okay, Trackmaster 2 Thomas is away. Nasty big clone, Dirty Thomas, coming in for a big collision. And they're going to... And Trackmaster 2 Thomas keeps getting caught up. And we all know why. Because of that stupid design underneath here, even on the blue track, it's useless. Okay, let's try that again. I forgot about the design change, which is actually causing this Thomas to hook up on this blue track. Okay, here we go. Coming in for the collision. Oh, yes. Oh, it's very even Stevens at the moment. Very even Stevens. In fact, I think this is a draw. They are fighting it out there. That nasty, dirty, big clone is doing all it can to push the uh, tractionless wheeled Thomas along there. It really is even Stevens. I don't think much is going to happen here. Oh, yeah, no matter what angle I take of this one, this looks absolutely Thomas the Tank Epic. Look at that cog wheel there trying to get traction on that Tommy Blue track. It's not doing a very good job. And this big Thomas here, even though he's got traction tyres, he can't get enough punch to knock the Trackmaster 2 Thomas to smithereens. But wait, I think there's actually a technical hitch going on here. Look at this here. The coupling there is getting caught up on the point. What happens if we move this? Then maybe we'll see a bit of free competition. We'll move this along a bit and see what happens. Oh, they are fighting, they are fighting. Okay, we're in Fairground here. We're on Fairground. The fight is back on. Oh, hang on a second. He's using his coupling again to advantage. Now, come on, Thomas. That's not very fair. You've got to play fair here. Oh, I can see. Oh, this is really interesting, this one. Yep, the coupling again, getting caught on the track. That's giving this track master to Thomas an advantage. I never thought this would happen. This cloner is giving this track master to Thomas a fair run for its money. I'm just pushing it into fairer ground again. Let's see what happens. I'd say that knockoff is actually more powerful. I cannot believe this. Oh, let me just move this battle up into some clearer track away from where the couplings can interfere. Okay, what about here? Okay, what's going to happen here? Yo, I'd say that knockoff is pushing the Trackmaster 2 Thomas along. The coupling at the back, he keeps getting caught up in the track. Oh, yeah. I've seen enough. The winner is the knockoff. Big, nasty, dirty Thomas the Tank. But just to spice it up, what if I add the Trackmaster Classic 1 Thomas the Tank to come over back here for support? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's cleared the rails and the Classic Trackmaster Thomas the Tank. Looks like it is a clear to find winner. Definitely don't see that on YouTube every day. Oh, another train wreck. Well, you see that on YouTube every day. Oh boy, oh boy. It is actually all too much fun uh, mucking around like this. It really is. Uh, there's one thing I want to show you before um, I move on to something different. And that is the size of this Thomas versus these two here. Let me do a line up. Well, I have all the Thomases lined up. Well, hopefully you can see some scale difference there. That is Trackmaster 2. This is classic Trackmaster 1. And this is this quite unusual and a little bit larger knockoff Tommy Thomas the Tank. And even looking at the front here, you can see the scale of the face is larger as well. Well, maybe the strangest aspect in design to this knockoff is the fact we're missing the running board at the front here, which seems to be covered up by this piece of work here. Probably got a name, but I wouldn't know it. 
And the fact that the water tanks here are so elongated and large, whereas in the other Thomas models, they are far shorter. I suppose this front boiler section is different as well, but hey, on the Trackmaster 2, they seem to have got it wrong there. The classic Trackmaster, I think, has got it much closer to how it should be, but on this knockoff here, it's not right either. But for all the things that are actually going wrong with this model, um, as a collector, I like it because it's got that diversity that I like to see. The fact we've got a number here in the back. There's a lot of things wrong about this, but um, in its kooky ways, there's actually a lot of things right as well. And just while we're thinking about these little knockoff sets that use the Tomy Blue Track, I should just show you how much of this uh, knockoff Blue Track I've accumulated uh, after looking at quite a number of these knockoff sets. Don't be fooled for the fact that says Tomy there. That's actually from one of the knockoff sets. It's interesting that one. I mean, this is one which has got a fairly rough uh, sharp edge left on the side here that's one way you can sort of tell this track apart for the fact it's a bit roughly finished that lot there it's a slightly different color I think or tone of blue than the real Tommy track but down there is just stacks of it you know it goes double track there's all different sorts of bits and pieces some of it's a different sort of shade of blue but there's so much of it in there I really don't know what to do I'm sort of thinking that maybe we will see knockoff classic Trackmaster track appear now we've moved on to Trackmaster 2. Well, let me just have a, a small serious chat with the people who watch my videos, especially those who are up near the end here. But then again, this message would have been better off for those who flutter away at the beginning. Normally, I would come in and I would look at another train set in this video because I'm the sort of person who doesn't milk the crap out of AdSense like other producers here on YouTube. As you would all know, I like to cram in as much stuff to see in a video as I possibly can, and I only ever set the ads for the start of the video. I don't have ads midway through videos. I do that because, well, number one, I'm not greedy, and number two, I can't stand being interrupted by ads when I'm watching a video myself. But from the messages Google are sending me, they're basically saying what I should do is if I was doing this video, I should just look at this and make it one video. Look at this and make it one video. Look at this train set here, make another video. Look at those there, make a video. Look at that one there, make a video. And so on. Imagine the income I could make from the AdSense revenue by splitting all this up. Well, I can tell you this, and it's the truth. I saw some information and basically... 50% of my audience is gone within a minute of my videos. So half my audience wouldn't even be seeing this message. In fact, I don't think one quarter of my audience would be seeing this message. Maybe only a fifth or maybe one sixth of them would be. But the problem for me is while Google see attention data as being very important to rank a video or rank a channel, it leaves me in a very, very poor state on these networks. And to be honest, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't want to become one of those copy and paste cookie cut producers that now seem to flood the YouTube networks. And many of these uh, producers seem to be on the passion of uploading minimum one video a day. So over a year, you'd be up all well, 365 videos in a year. They're probably more than that. Some of them are pumping out 500 videos a year. Basically, make sure you're cramming in every popular toy in your search to somehow make them appear in your videos. And if that's what YouTube has become, well, I'm very sorry. It's a very sad day indeed. And sure, there were some people that I knew on YouTube and they changed to these sort of very spammy channels where they were mass uploading very, very similar videos. And I sort of thought to myself, wow, I don't think I really ever want to be connected to this style of YouTuber. And if I was going to mimic this style of YouTubing and I was going to review, let's say, this Thomas set here, I would have somehow incorporated Peppa Pig, some Play-Doh, Disney planes, you know, a bit of surprise egg action, Dora the Explorer, Hot Wheels, Lightning McQueen, Angry Birds, made sure that was all wrapped up in one video and I could spam the absolute crap out of YouTube when I upload the video. But that there is only just one video. Remember, I've got to pump out at least a video a day, so I've got to take all that funky stuff and apply it to that set there get all the funky stuff you know pepper pigs surprise eggs hot wheels blah 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 around this set here around this stuff here as well that's how it works on my channel uh, i like to take a gamble i like to look at different things 
And it's interesting, there's one example here. When I looked at these Equestria Girl dolls, uh, these were great dolls, and in the end, the video became very popular. In a funny way, it was a surprise. I thought, wow, I should have come in and made a whole bunch more videos. I should have just locked into these and, you know, pumped out, you know, one of these a day, and, man, I could have retired. Uh, but no, I didn't do that. I only ever made one video featuring those dolls. Another example was when I looked at Dickie Toys. Man, this video went ballistic out of the box. It was somehow, you know, picking up massive views in a very short time, and it still does to today. Uh, did I go and just get locked onto one thing there? No. I've only done it once. I am going to come back and look at Dicky Toys, but I'm probably not going to make it a habit of it. And then the other one is, I haven't got a Kinder Bunny here, but when I looked at the Kinder Bunnies doing the different counting video, you know, counting 1 to 10. But if one Kinder Bunny should accidentally blow... There'll be nine Kinder Bunnies thinking, oh no. Did I get hooked on that? That's a massively popular video as well. Well, no. I just did it once. But the message in that video is, I saw everyone else doing counting 1 to 10 videos, and I thought to myself, well, hey, I'll show you how to do it differently, and I'll take the gamble and just see if it works. And it does work. And I think the best thing that you can do on YouTube is bring something new to YouTube. That's what it's desperately needing at the moment. Unfortunately... We've got a whole bunch of copy and paste cookie cut YouTubers that see this as the formula to success. Now what's going to happen is that all this is going to collapse around you because everyone is basically doing the same thing. They're basically copying the top toy channel on YouTube thinking, oh well if they're doing it and they're really mega successful, I'll come along and do it as well. Sure, it seems like a super safe bet doing what everyone else does, but I can guarantee to you this is a very short-term gain what happens if YouTube is it changes over time and in the end what you'll find is that what's popular today won't be popular in the future what YouTube needs are people who are prepared to take a gamble and as one person said to me Leo you're a survivor on these networks and yes I will agree to that over the years I've seen many many very large channels fall down around me and somehow I haven't gone down with them I've been very lucky. It is interesting, I do wonder to myself, let's say if my channel collapsed, what would I do? Would I just go in and mimic the top YouTubers here on the networks? You know, just basically get all the popular things in a video and just keep regurgitating the same thing over day after day after day. And if I could do multiple uploads a day, do, so, do that as well. Just make sure I completely smother the ranks. No, I don't think I'd do that. I think the way I like to get out of trouble is probably best shown by, well, this doll here. A good old Pinkie Pie from Equestria Girls. In a funny way, she's a great example of taking a gamble. You know, My Little Pony. Who would have ever thought that we could transpose that to a human form? Man, it was massively successful. And for me, looking at those dolls was a gamble. I had to go out and buy the dolls. And I thought, well, is this going to work? Well, luckily it did. But in a funny way, I always knew that taking a gamble is always sometimes the best thing to do on YouTube. So to finish up in this sort of channel rant, I think the message that I'm going to send to the people who watch my videos is, hey guys, don't worry. I'm not going to sort of abide by what Google are asking me to do. I'm not going to become a person that just spits out a whole ton of short videos on the networks. I'm going to always be prepared to take a gamble, and I'm always going to rejoice in a longer video on these networks. And I'm sure those who listen to that end channel rant will have something to say. I better say goodbye now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and bye for now. When he takes off, who knows where he's going to go? He's going to go and take out Thomas. Oh, Thomas came in for a kiss then. See that? You don't see that every day. Meow. Who's the Thomas fanboy out there who can unravel this mystery? Sorry for that one. I had to lay that pun in. Did... Before I crack it open, I'll just show you how large... Oh, I mean, how small, how dumb am I? And this is where they uh, can cause all sorts of dramas, is they are fairly easy to pull apart. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh! He made a jump! I hope I got that on camera. Put that knockoff Thomas around there. Put Thomas Trackmaster to Thomas there. Off that one goes. Off that one goes. 
Uh, we've got a hookup over there. Okay, Trackmaster 2 Thomas is away. Nasty big dirty clone is coming in and they're coming in for the collision! Oh, well almost. That's on the far wheel. Oh yes, this is YouTube gold scene in this fight out here. It is a classic fight out. Very, very, even Stevens, the latest in Mattel's mastery of Thomas the Tank. Trackmaster 2 there versus, whoa, one big, very nasty, dirty Thomas the Tank clone. That is fairly impressive, but hey, don't get too impressed by that because it's a killer.